I've reviewed the 2021 Ford Bronco, and the cliff notes, uh, no pun intended, are this. At the very least, it can match Wrangler out on the tough stuff. <sighs> I literally cannot see. I'm looking straight up into the sky. This is incredibly steep. Plus, get you back to the city in the kind of comfort the more expensive Defender offers. And the design is a home run. It is thirsty, and the cabin materials aren't up to Jeep and Range Rover quality, but Ford has produced an impressive package. Seems like it will be hard to find an available Bronco at dealerships for the foreseeable future. If you're waiting for delivery, and many are, I'm expanding on a few things from my first review and show some things that I left out. For example, bolts with Bronco on them signal that gear is designed to mount there. Ford is partnered with off-road oriented companies, so accessories are available right out of the gate. A reminder, doors on the four-door model store in the cargo hold. Pictograms help get them in the proper bag. Scan the QR code for door removal instructions. Bronco can be had with upfitter switches that are pre-wired, so adding lighting and other accessories is exceptionally easy, and there's no drilling into your very expensive rig. Uh, we're going to demonstrate three of the technologies that Bronco has with us. Johnny Van Wagner, driving instructor at Ford's Texas Off Rodeo Center, took me out to describe some of the tech that will help drivers on the trail. I'm going to let him get into the details. So, one pedal drive. Have you heard of one pedal drive yet? I have. Okay. And now I want to experience. Great. So, what one pedal drive is doing as a uh, experienced off roader. They would do what we call two foot driving or left foot braking. Uh -huh. So the reason that we do this in an off-road situation is so it can smooth out how our vehicle handles over bumpy or rocky terrain. Well, what Bronco has done is they've taken that theory and that technique, they've turned it into a technology uh -huh. and they've put that braking, that automatic braking into the throttle pedal. As soon as you ease off of the throttle pedal, uh -huh. The Bronco is applying the brake automatically for you. Okay. In the center button of your goat mode cluster, if you look up on your driver's screen, it'll say one pedal drive active. So right now, one pedal drive is active. You can see here, you have a uh, green icon, which looks like a foot on a, on a pedal with a one in it. Uh -huh. I got my foot on the brake. If I take my foot off the brake, it's holding us. When I go and press on the throttle, it's gonna overcome the braking allow us to move forward. If I let off of the throttle, it applies the brake, oh, okay. stops us right here. So it's automatically applying the brake. Correct. Once you get off the throttle. Absolutely. So we're going up a pretty steep hill right here. We're sitting about a 19 degree slope uphill. Uh, Bronco does include 360 degree camera option. We can see everything down the hill with our front camera. It's pretty dang cool. It's a 12 inch screen. Now as I come down the hill, if I let myself off the gas, it'll lock that brake up. Okay. So we're coming downhill now about 23 degrees. But really, in an ideal situation, this is great for rocks. So we got kind of a boulder filled or what we call a rock garden. A lot of rolling rocks and maybe loose rocks where we might have some you know, our vehicle may shift a little bit. Uh -huh. And so as we navigate over the rock, we want to be as smooth as possible. But now I'm still just have one pedal drive on. All I'm doing is operating the throttle as we're climbing over our little boulder field here. And as I ease up on the, on the throttle, it's going to slow us down. It makes it nice and smooth as we come over this terrain. So as an experienced driver, do you find that this makes a difference? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, I've, I've actually started yielding or using one pedal drive quite a bit. I've done a lot of left foot braking uh -huh. and two foot driving, but that gets a little, uh, can cause driver fatigue, you know? You're stretching your left leg out and you're not used to holding that out there. Now the other feature that Bronco does have is trail control. It's operated with the same button that one pedal drive is, the trail control is our slow speed off-road cruise control. Mm -hmm. So if I use the buttons on my steering wheel for my regular cruise control, my set and minus, I could select the set button and on your driver's screen it will show you trail controls active. 
Starting at one mile an hour and every half a mile an hour increment, I can set a target speed for how fast I want the Bronco to maintain. Okay. So I'm gonna set at three and a half miles an hour right now. Once I let my foot off of the brake, the Bronco will accelerate to three and a half miles an hour and maintain that speed for us. This is a pretty good driving mode, just like we'd use cruise control on a highway. Uh -huh. If we got, you know, maybe a long distance that we're driving off road that we don't need to be going faster than 20 miles an hour, trail control can hold us at a lower speed. Let us just focus on our steering input and where we're going. So trail turn assist, uh, what it is, is it's a uh, turning technology that as we go through a corner, it's gonna apply the brake to our rear inside tire. Okay. It's gonna turn that tire into a bit of a pivot point. Right. What it can do is actually reduce our turning radius by up to 40%. Huh. So we got a bit of a driveway here with a couple rocks and a, and a half moon shape. Our goal right now, we're gonna drive through one time without trail turn assist. Our goal is not to go over the edges of our driveway, not to run over any of the rocks. So as we pull into our driveway here, just in a regular driving mode, you know, no, no added technology at this time. Still in four-wheel drive low. We come through the corner. Got a little bit of mud, it's pushing us. We're kind of up on the rock here. So we're gonna actually back up a little bit. Square up, because we don't want to run over our rocks. And come around through here. Now the next lap that we're gonna do, will activate trail turn assist. Bronco's the only manufacturer that has that in their vehicle now. The way to get trail turn assist to activate is first we have to select the button. So as we come through and we can see where we're going, we can select the button at any time, uh -huh. at any speed we're moving. Once we select that button, it gives us a nice light that indicates that, that feature is active. Now to get trail turn assist to activate or to respond, it's all with the steering wheel. So as we bring that steering wheel all the way over to full lock, uh -huh. it will lock that tire in as we go around that corner. Okay. Now, a couple things that to be aware of that you're not normally used to. Uh, when that brake is activated, it's going to slow you down, right? right. So you got a brake being applied. So you just need to compensate a little bit with a little added throttle press pressure uh, okay. to help drag the rest of the vehicle around that braking. You will hear some new no noises. They're normal noises with trail turn assist. So they come through. I turn the wheel over. You kind of feel us jerking a little bit. Yeah. What's happening is, so that tire down there was actually locking up and turned into a skid or a drag. Sure, yeah. We, uh, in off-road world, we would call it similar to a cutting brake. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of uh, professional rock crawlers use that for, yeah. for their you know moon buggy type of vehicles. Uh, and we've also seen this technology in uh, uh, agriculture with tractors. So we got some dirt mounds here that are gonna show us the articulation of our suspension. As we travel through, we'll be dropping one side, raising another. As they get larger, we may run out of traction and we can apply some technology. Right now, once again, we're still in a normal driving mode. We don't have any electronic locking differentials active. We don't have our stay bar disconnect yet. So right now, we came over a big hill. Our passenger side nose dipped down into the valley there. Uh -huh. Our rear tire is about a foot off the ground in the back on our driver's side. So uh, what's really cool with Bronco, with their stabilizer bar disconnect, our suspension's pretty bound up. Well, at the push of a button, we can relax that suspension, separate that stabilizer bar, uh -huh. and allow our front suspension to actually have more articulation. So I understand that on highway driving, we need a sway bar or a stabilizer bar that prevents our body from rolling, you know, prevents us from maybe getting car sick. Right. Right. And, and then you look at it on, on a track and, and maybe a, a sports car or a race car, they have a very, very stiff suspension. Right. So that they can go through corners a lot easier. Yeah. Well, for us in the off road, we prefer a very loose suspension. We want that suspension to travel. So Bronco's done something phenomenal, a little bit different than the other brands is at the push of a button. Wow. Now yeah. our, our suspension settled down. Yeah. So instead of that tire being off the ground about a foot, it's actually touching the ground right now. Sure, yeah. So instead of spinning tires, our, our goal is to, you know, leave a minimal impact on the terrain that we have. 
So we'll apply another technology, which would be an electro electronic locking differential. So generally I defer to the rear differential locker uh, first, just so I can maintain more steering input with the front being open. Now, if I don't have enough traction, what the locker does is equalizes power between the left and right wheel, locks that axle completely solid so both wheels move at the same speed. So in the Bronco, we do have front and rear differential lockers. If I don't have enough traction with just the rear, I can lock up the front and that will give me even more traction and give me true four wheel drive. All four tires will have equal power and move at the exact same speed. So we're a little bit on a side tilt here. We're just gonna transition over to uh, our sand hill. But uh, we're about 20 degree, 21 degree slide, side slope. Let's see, maybe we'll get down about 24 degrees. Let's, you feel the gravity pulling you a little bit, right? <laughs> get my abdominal work in today. Right, right. So Bronco's very stable though, up to about 30 degree slope. Uh, you're, you're pretty safe to travel on depending on your speed. Remember, Bronco buyers get schooling at one of four off-rodeo centers in the U.S. It's complimentary, you just need to get to one. Same goes for Bronco Sport Badlands models, and you'll be using Ford's vehicles, uh, saving wear and tear on yours. This is a very cool facility. If you buy a Bronco and come to an off-rodeo, and you really should because it's free, you'll have a great time. You'll learn a lot. There's some great instructors here. So there you go, a little more in-depth stuff about the new Ford Bronco. I'm hoping to get one for more than the 12 hours or so that I spent with it in Texas to give you an even better look. I'm doing what I can. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.